This is it. This is the last update. A new Frontier Pass, a year-long adventure that Frax has put us on, and it's been an incredible ride. Really excited to see what they have in the last update. In April, they did say that they were going to rework two-thirds of all of the sieves, and I'm really excited about that. But this is the official last update of the pass, so let's take a look. Welcome, Civ fans, to the developer video for the final pack in the Civilization VI New Frontier Pass. We'll be announcing our next new Civ and giving you all the details on two new World Wonders, a new map script, Ooh. and another exciting brand new game mode. Every time we've announced any new Civ, we've seen a ton of requests on social media for this Civ. Oh my god, it's... So, okay, so I did have this spoiled for me a little bit. Um, it just, it's, it's a, that's a funny story. I was I saw that it got leaked. I avoided the spoilers. I see that uh, they're talking about it on some discords and I avoided those spoilers. I go to a private discord with just my friends and literally he tags me in it and says, hey, what do you think about this? And I'm like, why would you spoil this for me? <laughs> So I'm uh, Portugal. I think it's Portugal. It's been so hard to keep it secret when there's been so much demand for it, but finally, at long last, we are thrilled to announce that the next new Civ is known for its vast naval empire, powerful port cities, being one of the first yeah, truly global okay. civilizations. At long last, we're bringing you Portugal. It was only a matter of time. Imagine if they didn't bring Portugal. Imagine if this was... I thought this would be the Philippines because I thought they were going to keep going to like the islands and like and the next continent would have been like Australia and New Zealand, but they already have both of those. So I'm like, oh, I guess Philippines kind of makes sense. But they brought in Portugal. Cool. Oh my gosh. People can just like calm down now. It's finally in the game. Okay. It's going to be in the game. Just everybody relax. Everybody relax. It is funny that they kept it for last, though. I think that's that's kind of hilarious. He's saving a detailed discussion of Portugal's mechanics for the first look video, but it should come as no surprise. Look at these unique boats, baby. What era is this? The medieval era? It looks like you got some unique caravels going on here. Okay. Okay. What else we got? Is there anything over here to look at? No, I see some trade routes though. He's working in an industrial zone project. Uh, is that unique right here? What is that? Is that a unique harbor? <gasps> That's a unique harbor, isn't it? That looks that looks very different than video, all the others. But it should come as no look at that. Surprise. Look at that. And look at this. They're different. It looks a little bit. Is it different? Actually, I don't know. Okay, maybe I'm just dumb. That you're going to need to sharpen your naval skills. History has so many compelling civilizations, it's always a challenge for us to choose which one we want to feature next. However, Portugal gave us the chance to design some systems that really encourage and reward maritime exploration and trade. Hmm. This is something that not a lot of other civs specialize in. So putting Portugal on a map really creates some fun. Yeah, see, so they have, you can see the frigate here as well. So this is definitely a caravel, a unique caravel. Strategic opportunities. We also used Portugal as the inspiration for one of our two world wonders, with the second mm -hmm. hailing from another previously released Civ, Babylon. Historically, the imposing Torre de Belém served as a ceremonial gateway to Lisbon. In Civilization VI, it grants additional gold and great admiral points. It also provides bonus gold for every luxury resource at a destination of international trade routes. Okay. This looks really cool. That, I guess, is not a unique harbor. I think that's like a regular looking harbor. Uh, but this is cool. International traders from this city receive plus two gold for every luxury resource at the destination. When I'm not going to try to pronounce that is constructed, cities not on your home continent receive the lowest production cost building they can currently get. Oh, wow. What? So they combined Babylon's ability with that's really cool. And it's like any time, any time. I, so this is this 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 goes beyond the first district as well. So Babylon's is only restricted to just like the first district, but with this one, if you get a continent split, you build this thing, you just start settling all the on the other continent. How late is this? How late do you get this? If you get this early, this is huge, huge. And when constructed, gives any city you own on an other continent a free building. Meanwhile, the towering ziggurat at Temenanki grants additional science yields every turn, as well as bonus science and production to all floodplains. <laughs> oh my gosh. I like how they're just, they're making marsh tiles be so much better. I love it. It was like something that no one asked for, but at the same time, it was so needed. 
marsh tiles are terrible. They have three food. You can't upgrade them. The only thing you can do is chop them. If you get the Pantheon to get them to production, that's cool, but then you still can't upgrade them, so they're a permanent 3-2 tile. Then they added the Biosphere, which gave them plus appeal, and it also gives them power or science. I can't rem remember exactly. And then they're adding this wonder to get marsh tiles even better. I like this, man. Man, imagine imagine if you got all of those things, the Pantheon, the Biosphere, and this. And your marsh tiles are going to be popping off. Love it. Love it. And it's home city. That's you. This is you. Is this unique? No. No. And marsh I'm, I'm tiles here. and it's civilization. Speaking of marsh tiles, the Portugal pack also includes a new map script, the Wetlands. Dominated no by marshes, this map offers new strategic <laughs> challenges and defensive possibilities. For example, while marshes penalize movement, careful positioning can allow ranged units to exploit enemies' reduced speed. Finally, the bone mint we've been waiting for, included in the Portugal pack, is our latest <laughs> brainchild. I this got spoiled for me too. The, basically, what the person says is like, "So, how do you feel about Portugal and zombies?" And I'm like, "What?" I'm like, I didn't even know about it. Zombie defense yeah. in this optional grave mode. The dead don't. Zombie! Oh my God! Wait, wait! We predicted this. We predicted this. An on, like an oncoming. Oh, oh, oh! This is sick. Stay dead for long and present an ever-growing threat to the world's civilizations, or as I like to think of it, an ever-growing brain drain. In zombie defense, every unit slain in combat has a chance to rise from the battlefield as a ravenous zombie. Zombie units. I want to point out, I enjoy the little detail of the scratch in her glasses. I think that's really cool. Zombie, zombie units chase and attack the nearest non-zombie unit, and any unit they successfully catch, crunch, and kill responds as zombies themselves. But don't worry, because sadly, the living can fight back. An arsenal of new trap and barricade improvements deal damage to oh, hostile awesome. units that pass through or near them. That's These cool. mode-specific improvements can be built on owned or neutral territory, and again, Sadly, zombies' obsession with brain banquets and digestive devastation means they can only fall victim to the traps and barricades and are unable to pillage them. Huh? Okay. Also, and luckily <laughs> for the undead, <clears throat> two new city projects allow civilizations to temporarily subjugate the zombie units within a city's limit, putting what? them under player's control. This what? lets you direct zombies' mindless mayhem at your opponent. You can either use zombies to directly target enemy <sighs> units, or just move them out of your city and closer to someone else's brain. <laughs> Yo, any time you can cause havoc to your neighbor like that, that is awesome. We just like, what is this ability though? I caught it a little, what is this? I don't know what this is. I wonder what that is. Out of your city and closer to someone else's brains. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe that's what it does. It converts them back. Delicious. You'll also have access to the zombie defense spy operation, which attempts to spawn zombie units on work tiles in another player's city. <laughs> ah, oh my goodness. And then this is basically Nystagmus's spy that he literally just mentioned about, where you can recruit partisans without having a neighborhood. This is exactly it. This is awesome. I like this. And most importantly, brains. brains. To sum up, the sixth and final <laughs> installment of the new Frontier Pass is the much-requested Portugal Pack. Also featuring new world wonders from Portugal and Babylon, a new marsh-focused map script, and a new game mode that my coworkers are really, really hyped about. Civ fans, you're the best fans in gaming. We appreciate your support through every new Frontier Pass Pack release, and we hope you'll continue to follow us on social media to keep up to date on all the latest in the Civilization franchise. For one so thing, creepy. be sure to check back in April as we reveal the final free game update of the season. Mm -hmm. We hope you are all staying safe and healthy and non-zombified. And remember, when it comes to civilization or the undead, there's always one more brain. Ah, uh, one more brain. Turn. The hashtag oh. is one more turn. <laughs> all right cool i would have been it would have been really funny though if they didn't include portugal and then seeing everybody just rage about how mad they are about portugal not being included come on that would have been that would have been kind of funny but i think this is really cool uh, i didn't really see any like clear indication of what these portuguese building or unique improvement can be 
Like there's nothing here that indicates what it can be. I thought it might have been the harbor. I don't think it is. I would have thought it might have been uh, maybe like, oh, here's a commercial hub, but that looks exactly the same as well. The buildings look really cool here, but the granary is the same. Can you imagine a unique granary? That'd be kind of cool. I thought it would have been a unique commercial hub, but I guess not because Mali's the only civilization with a unique commercial hub. So I thought, you know, another one of those. A unique harbor would also make sense because Portuguese are known for their naval, like he said before. Uh, but it maybe isn't a unique harbor. There's nothing really here. They, I guess, purposefully, purposefully hit it. They hit this very well as well. No, they're not making it blurry anymore. They're just completely hiding it. Good call. Good call. But it should nothing down it here also indicates that's Babylon. So I guess that doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, there's nothing here to indicate what Surprise is going on. That you're going to need to sharpen your naval skills. Sharpen your naval. I don't know. I think it's really cool. Let's see the comments. What are the comments like? Frontier Pass was the best money spent on a season pass DLC ever. I, I actually agree with this. It was really, really good. It was way more than I thought it would ever be. Like I thought, oh, just one new sieve or two new sieves every every two months. Like that doesn't seem like a lot. It's I think it was forty dollars when we first bought it. So I'm like, you know, that's kind of a lot of money per sieve. But you know what? Let's give it a go. The game modes alone, the updates, the support, the constant updates, the feedback everything about the new frontier pass the interaction with the community as well the fact that the community got behind this so hard and there was so much hype every single month so much talk it was absolutely incredible i really hope that in the future firaxis can keep this up and they can keep doing these monthly updates when civ 7 eventually because we all know eventually it will come when civ 7 comes i hope that they continue this kind of support Everyone asking for Portugal. Here it is. Yep, yeah, I know. It's finally here, man. Oh, when does the next season start? Hey, good question, buddy. Good question. When does the next season start? Oh, yeah. I didn't think about this. Wetlands is really good with Vietnam. Vietnam is going to have a lot of, I think it's production on the wetlands. And so that just makes them even better. So who, who takes a part? Who takes, who takes advantage of wetlands? I guess it's only really... I, I would guess Portugal... I'm going to guess Portugal is going to be good with marsh. I have no idea what. Maybe they get extra yields from the marsh. Maybe just extra production. Or science maybe is it, it, kind of the indicator because that wonder gives you science. I don't know, man. But I'm thinking they're going to do something cool with marsh. The next thing has been one... Fans have been requesting for a long time. Iroquois, Iroquois, Iroquois. Ah, uh, poor guy. Iroquois would have been cool. I, th I would have I would have liked another Tundra or Snow Sieve, but you know what? I'm okay with Portugal. Really hoping to see a commercial victory mode in Venice as a Sieve. They're not going to bring Venice back. Venice was a one-time thing, and it was really cool, and it should just it should die with the game. The reason why Venice doesn't work in Civ 6 is because puppeting is not a thing. Puppeting was a thing in Civ 5, so in the mechanics, it worked. Venice worked in Civ 5. It doesn't work in Civ 6. They're not going to bring Venice back. Just... Just stop now. They have Maori. Maori's the Maori is the Venice of Civ 6. Okay? He starts in the middle of the ocean. How, what more how how much more unique can you get than that? You start in the middle of the ocean. You can't even settle turn one. You can't even settle until like turn ten. If you want a one city challenge, just play Ethiopia and just don't build settlers. I'm hoping they stop on New Frontier Pass so they can focus on Civ 7. Oh, 100 percent Civ 7's already in the works. 100 percent <laughs> I like this comment. Portugal gave us the chance to design some systems that really encourage and reward maritime ex exploration and trade. Spain, am I a joke to you? <laughs> Spain's such a joke, man. Spain is such a joke. All they need to do is be able to lock religious units and military units in Spain. It will not be as terrible as they are made out to be. Zombie mode looks like a hard pass. Doesn't interest me in the slightest, but looking forward to hearing more about Portugal. Interesting. New wonders seem interesting. They do, but I have no interest in a game mode that, dis that disincentivizes empire building and doesn't really add any strategic depth. Just annoyance. It's not annoying. So this, I, I get where you're coming from. You're probably like, this is probably somebody who strictly plays single player and I get it because like, why would you ever do that? But in our case, in the Civ Show's case, if I can recruit zombies and then just send them over to Zoe or send them over to Nystagmus and just like let them be and they're, and they're barbarians again, I'm like, well, sucks to suck. I think that's a lot of fun. I, I don't know. I think it, I think it's cool. I, I Like I said, I get where you're coming from. It doesn't really support any victory conditions. It's just kind of like this 
you know, wave of zombies coming in. I don't know. It's nothing to be fun. Anyways, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you liked what you saw, consider hitting the subscribe button down below and also give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Did you guys enjoy the New Frontier Pass? Was there a sieve that you wanted but it was not featured in the New Frontier Pass? Let us know in the comments below and we will see you in the next video.